Hi guys, what is up? Welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys exactly how I organize my GCSE folders. So basically, I'm going to be giving you a tour of three of my folders. The first one's gonna be my day folder, so the folder that I bring to school with me every single day. The second two are both Lever Arch binders, so ones that I store at home because they're too big to bring to school. The first one's gonna be my physics one, and the second one's going to be my English literature one because there are two ways that I organize my binders depending on the subject. Anyways, without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so firstly, I'm going to be giving you guys a tour of my day folder. So inside, usually I would have dividers like this, but with the tabs as well, of course. This is a sheet that I've taken out of my big physics binder. Usually instead of the units, it would be the subjects that I take. So for example, English literature, English language, maths, biology, etc. So I got this idea from Eve Bennett and I will link her video up in the cards up here or up here so i'd advise you to click on it if you want a more in-depth explanation but essentially what i do is i only bring this binder to school with me and whenever our teachers give us papers or sheets or anything i will put them in here under the name of the subject and depending on how long we need those sheets of paper so a few days or a few weeks i would keep them in there and once i was done with them i would file them away in my big binders which i will show you now so today I'm going to be showing you two binders. Firstly, my physics one and then my English literature one. So let's start off with physics. So as you can see, I've organized it according to the unit. So for physics, we have five units, general physics, thermal physics, waves, light and sound, electricity and magnetism, and atomic physics. So what I've done is I've basically put one tab for each unit. And that is exactly the same as what I've done for chemistry, biology, my humanities, like geography and history as well. However, I do organize a few of my subjects a different way, which I will show you a little bit later. The first tab that I have is my specification. But firstly, I want to show you what's under this contents page. So what I've done is I've gone to the Physics Math Tutor website and I've printed out all of their summary notes for each chapter. So as you can see, it's very, very concise and I just kind of use this as kind of a reference because they do kind of remind me of some things and I've made notes on my laptop. So I've gone through these and added anything to my notes based on whether or not I've missed out anything. So the first red tab is the specification. And if you have not printed your specification out already and you're doing your GCSEs right now, please, please, please do so because they're literally a lifesaver. The bullet points are exactly what you need to know for your exam. So please use it to your advantage. So here's the content overview, um, the units and the circuit, the circuit components. And then we have arrived at the first unit, which is general physics. So here's a specification. I have this one just for reference and I have another one with all of the units stapled together and I've just kind of gone through and ticked off every single bullet point and if I didn't know what it meant I would go and ask my teacher so yeah I would highly recommend doing that. So in here what I have is compiled all of my class notes and the worksheets my teacher has given us. And yeah, so I'm just going to take you through it. So class notes, class notes, and then here, this is worth mentioning. So since general physics is quite a broad topic, they have a lot of subtopics within it. So I have some sticky notes in here to kind of subdivide each divider, if that makes sense. So for example, measurements, and then I have motion, um, forces, momentum, etc. So I keep them in there to kind of place mark and signpost what unit I'm at so it's not that confusing. So here are some of the worksheets my teacher has given us in class, a lot of writing, and then just class notes that I've taken, um, some worksheets that we had to do, and then here's another unit. You get the gist, um, more worksheets, class notes, worksheets. Then we get on to the second unit, which is thermal physics. Again, I have my specification here. Um, class notes, class notes, class notes, worksheets, graphs, more, more worksheets. 
some textbook questions that I answered, etc. So basically, I do that for each unit. And then I've also gone on my laptop and I have a Google Doc for each unit as well. So I will write out my notes according to the syllabus points, which is very, very useful. And I cannot stress how important it is. I've compiled those notes using predominantly Save My Exams, the physics textbook, my class notes and the worksheet my teacher has given us. OK, so the rest are all the same. And for number seven, I have tests. So. What I do is I keep all of my tests at the back of this binder and this is really useful to go back to and see where you went wrong in each of your tests, especially for your final exam. So you know where your downfalls are and so that you can make sure not to make the same errors in the actual exam. So that's what I found was really helpful and also in case exams are cancelled, for example, this is really good proof and really good evidence that you can actually do the stuff and your teacher isn't making up your predicted grade. So yeah, that's how I organize most of my sciences and things that I can split into units. So now moving on to English literature. So this is my English literature folder. And the difference is that I have organized this according to papers, since there aren't really any units in English. So here again, I have my specification. Then I have paper one, so poetry, prose, and past papers. Then I have paper three, Twelfth Night Notes, Twelfth Night Class Essays, past papers. Then paper four, unseen poetry, unseen prose, and past papers. So let's get started. So I have my assessment overview. And there wasn't really much use of printing out the English specification, in my opinion, only like the band descriptors and the mark scheme. But yeah, I didn't think it was much use. So here I just have some um, poetry that I annotated during class and I've just kept them in this plastic folder. And then here is the specification. So this is the list of all the poems that we've studied and all the poems that they could possibly test for paper one. Um, so I have every single poem annotated twice here. So for example, this is Cage Bird. This is the one that I did at home um, using the internet. And then this is the one that I did at school. Sonnet 43, I did this at home, did this one at school. Um, Farmhand, did this at home, did this at school. So I have every single poem here annotated twice over, which gave me a very, very good understanding of each of the poems. So that's basically the same for all of them. Yeah. Moving on to the second tab, which is paper one prose. So every class's teacher will pick a book for you to study. So my teacher picked Washington Square by Henry James. So yeah, so in here, I have the entire book printed out as we started studying this book when COVID began. So she sent us a PDF version of the book. So I've just annotated it. Um, yeah, I annotated the book, well, the PDF version. And then, yeah, that kind of goes on. And then near the end, I didn't really annotate because we already got the book and we went back to school. So yeah, then the next thing that's worth your guys' time is this part. So I have another subdivider which says extract questions, if you guys can't see that. Um, and I've put all the extract questions in here that we've done at school um, and hopefully some essays. Yes, this is an essay that I did. Um, and then another extract question, another essay, more extract questions, and then some notes that we did, and then another essay. So yeah, that's basically what my English folder is compiled of. Essays and extract questions and passages. So this next section was for past papers, but I've taken everything out because I'm no longer doing my GCSEs. So I recycled all of the paper. So this next section is for 12th night notes. So these are notes that I've taken during class. They're really, really rough. So I apologize for that. So act one notes. We did a location description. I, f I really remember doing this. This was the first thing we ever wrote for a teacher other than the benchmark, but that doesn't really count. Then act two, notes. 
and then this is the next section which is for my class essays so this is what i was talking about in terms of the specification so this is the band descriptor table and this is how they grade you so you want to be in band eight i believe this is the correct version but they might have changed the specification so you should check the cambridge website and print this out so these are some notes that i took for this extract question the essay that i wrote more notes another essay another set of notes another essay and this is worthwhile mentioning as well so i used to stick a sticky note on every single one of my essays some of them have fallen off now but it was really useful at the time because i would identify everything that i got wrong once my teacher marked it so for example i was really bad at nouns and pronouns back then so she wrote nouns and pronouns there and i would write that so on the next essay that I wrote for her, I would try my best not to make the same error again. Another essay, and that's the end. I'm sure we wrote a lot more, but I probably didn't keep all of them. I'm not sure why, but I just didn't. Then this is an area for past papers. And then this is for my unseen paper. So I think that's paper four. So this is unseen poetry. And these are just poems that we annotated early on in the year in class. So yeah, and then here we have prose as well. So another essay um, and then another passage. So what I like to do is put the passage first and then if I have an essay, I'll put it right after. Um, but yeah, that's generally what I do. And yeah, the back part was for past papers as well, but I've thrown them all away now and recycled them. So that's why I don't have any left. But yeah, that's exactly how I organize all of my folders. Generally, I would file away all the stuff in my big binder every Saturday, but that would be dependent on the week. It wasn't a regimen that I followed strictly, but I probably should have because there were some days that the folder that I kept all the loose sheets that I didn't need anymore that weren't in my binder yet was very, very fat and that wasn't very good. So I'd advise you to kind of block out a time on a Saturday or a Sunday, anytime during the weekend or even Friday after school to hole punch and file away everything. Okay, I think that's gonna be it for this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed and if you did, be sure to give it a big thumbs up because it really helps me out. Also comment down below if you start your GCSEs this year and what your organization system is like and feel free to drop a comment below if you have any questions about my organization system and I will do my best to answer you guys. Anyways, I hope you guys have an amazing day and don't forget to make someone smile. Bye.